What up, hobby homies? Welcome to This Mini Sucks. Today, we're gonna paint up the Screaming Skull Catapult and get it ready for your games of Warhammer The Old World. So with the release of The Old World, I thought it was finally time to put the finishing touches on my Tomb Kings army that I started two years ago now. Um, the last big model in my collection is this Screaming Skull Catapult. This is a pewter model from 20 years ago. All we get for assembly on this guy is this one picture. Hmm. Interesting. This box has been sitting on my shelf for a couple of years now, and honestly, I was kind of afraid to put paint on it. But this is such an iconic piece of a Tomb King's army, I knew I had to get it looking sick for the tabletop. Either way, let's crack it open and see what's inside. Ooh. Mm. So one of the cool things about these old models is it actually has the date it was cast Right there, you can see 2002. So this is a 22 year old sculpt. We're gonna have to figure out what this tiny piece goes to. Make your guesses in the comments now. What the hell is this? No! Oh! No, that no. was the piece! <laughs> Hold on. Well, now we'll never know what that piece was. Before doing anything else, I wanted to take the time to properly clean the model. Working with metal definitely has its own set of challenges, but cleaning it isn't really one of them. You can just use a hobby knife, a sanding stick, a metal file, any of these things will do. The metal is kind of soft, so you don't have to apply too much pressure, and some of the flashing you can just pull off with your fingers. Hello, Wednesday. Ah, watch out, I don't want you to slice your face open. There's a cat scratcher. <laughs> she likes it. Okay, back to work. Sometimes it is hard to tell what's part of the model and what is steel flashing. Here you can see where the little divot is. I'm gonna wanna snip this off here. All right, now that we got everything cleaned up, it's time to dry fit for assembly. So we're gonna remove the things that aren't part of the actual catapult. All right, so it looks like it's gonna go something like this. All right, it is time to bust out some super glue and prayers. Oh, and a shitload of zip kicker. I think I'm gonna start with this piece here. It doesn't really give you an order of operations, so we're just gonna wing it. Assembly, on the other hand, might actually be the hardest part about working with metal. Um, it's definitely the part I remember struggling the most with as a kid. Uh, this time around, it didn't really go any better. With the model fully assembled, I decided to call it a night and start fresh in the morning. The next day before I started filming, I actually found that little metal piece that fell off the day before. So I stashed it away somewhere safe and figured I would just attach it at the end. It was time to decide what I was gonna do for the base. Back in the day, this didn't come with a base and didn't need one to be fielded in battle. The new book has it on a 60 by 100 millimeter rectangle base, which is only slightly larger than a chariot base. I didn't have the materials on hand to make something like this though, so I headed to my local craft store to search for some inspiration. I was definitely looking for plastic styrene as it's really easy to cut to size, but all they had were these acrylic sheets. Um, I also found some foam core and some scale model rocks that I scooped up as well. The acrylic I found ended up being a 5x7 rectangle, but I knew I wanted to make a square base. 
So I scored a line into the acrylic with a hobby knife and snapped it off on the edge of my table, ending up with a nice five by five square. Perfect. Five inches is around 127 millimeters, which is roughly twice the size of the suggested base width in the book. Um, that's okay though. Anytime I'm gonna be playing this game, we'll be with friends in a casual setting. So I'm not too worried about being like a super stickler for the rules. So with the acrylic sheet cut to size, I moved on to the foam. When attaching the foam to the acrylic, it is important to add some texture to the surfaces. Uh, this gives the glue something to grab onto and will give you a stronger bond. It's essentially the same height as the square bases, so by cutting square holes into it, I can sink the models down so they are flush with the terrain. I treated this movement tray the same way I would a tiny base for an infantry model. I started with some texture and crackle paint after getting the shape right and just kind of went to town with, you know, painting up the rocks, dry brushing, grass tufts, all that. I go further in depth into my basing techniques for Tomb Kings in my previous two videos, so if you like how these are shaping up, I would recommend taking a look at those. Typically I use an airbrush when priming, but I had a rattle can of Wraithbone and that's what I wanted to use anyway. And honestly, I'm not too afraid of obscuring the details with like rattle can primer on these metal minis. The details are so raised and dramatic that you don't have to worry about losing anything if you overspray or anything like that. So with the base looking good and my models primed up, there was only one thing left to do and that was get some paint on them. My Tomb King's army is mostly painted to match the box art, um, although I didn't have some of the Citadel colors on hand, so I just grabbed some Vallejo colors that looked close enough and got to work. The crew members were a lot of fun to work on. Some metal models details can be actually a little bit softer, especially than the current sculpts you're used to today, but skeletons just work so well in metal. Um, you can recess shade in between the bones with panel liner. The grooves are just so deep, it just flows in there and it looks really clean. I cruised through the rest of the paint job on these crew members with no issues, and I was feeling pretty confident before heading into the catapult. When you break it down to the materials that make it up, it's really only a few colors. You've got the red wood, the bone, the mummy wraps and leather, and the mummy flesh. So even though it's a pretty big model, um, I think it's gonna go pretty quick because it really is only like four colors. There's not even any gold on it. Well, maybe that could be gold. Just a tiny bit of gold on it. Five colors. It'll be quick. I realized as I was working through the model that it was almost like five or six different pieces in one. There were the two skeleton like bone doggy guys on the, bo <laughs> on the bottom. And then there was like the long throwing arm, the two skull towers, those two mummies, and then right on top was that vulture. Um, I kind of wasn't even sure where to start, but I knew the best way to make progress was to just not think about it and start base coating. I did end up spending more time painting this than like the rest of the whole project combined. Um, I tried a few different ways of speeding it up, like drenching one side in skeleton horde contrast paint just to see what would happen. Um, that didn't really work, so I painted all over that again and just refilled in the cracks with panel liner. And then, tragedy struck. I'd initially wanted to keep the catapult off the base, but it just wasn't sturdy enough on its own. So I decided to glue it to the movement tray and finish painting it that way. For the mummies, I wanted to do something that I thought would pop a little more than the gray on the box art. 
So since green is opposite of red on the color wheel, I decided to go with like a more ghoulish skin tone, um, hoping that this would stand out better against the wood as well as the white bone and tan wraps. It was just a lot of beige and neutrals going on. So I figured um, the green would be a nice pop of color. Oh, and don't think I forgot about this little guy. Hello, little friend. The other bone doggy's beard is safely secured and painted up. The only thing left to do now is um, put some finishing touches on the model. I'm gonna throw a bunch of sand on my dining room table and show you guys how these models all turned out. After seeing this all come together, I am so excited to finish my Tomb King's army. Um, I really only need one or two more models to have like a full 2000 point grand army comp for this new edition. I definitely want to get some games in with it and show you guys how they play. If you want to follow along on the journey to completing this army and seeing it in action, do all the regular YouTube things. You know what they are, so I shouldn't have to tell you. I hope you guys had fun today, especially my subscribers who have waited a very long time for this video to come out. I'm Sorry for the wait. I promise uh, the next one will be coming much sooner than this one did. So until that time comes, I hope you guys have fun painting and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.